All righty. So remember today in class we were working, we ended class on this example. We were looking at the integral of x dx over the square root of 3 minus 2x minus x squared. And we decided we were going to try that by completing the square in the denominator. So completing the square in the denominator, let's look at that, 3 minus 2x minus x squared. The first thing we want to do is take out any, any, um, any of the coefficients of x squared. In this case, x squared is negative 1, negative x squared. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 to get rid of that negative, and I get negative the quantity x squared, plus I've got to factor out the negative one of everything, right, plus 2x minus 3. Okay, so here's where we've got to stop and think. Let me get my magic pen that disappears. Okay, so we want to take the x squared and the 2x and decide how to complete that square. So we need to take the, we need to add a constant that is 2 over 2 the quantity squared. So where'd that 2 come from? It's this thing here. This divided by 2, the quantity squared, which of course is 1 squared, which is 1. So we're going to add and subtract 1. So let's tell you what we're going to do here. While that disappears, I'm going to say this is x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 minus 3, the idea being that that x squared plus 2x plus 1 is a perfect square. So let's go ahead and do that with ink that doesn't disappear. <laughs> okay, so negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 1 minus 3. Of course, I'm adding and subtracting 1 because I don't want to change the function. I'm keeping it the same function. I'm only changing the way it looks. But the whole idea is that x squared plus 2x plus 1 is now x plus 1, the quantity squared. And then we're left with a constant, which happens to be minus 4. And, of course, that negative distributes in. I get 4 minus x plus 1, the quantity squared. Okay, so let's box that off so it doesn't get in the way of everything else we're doing. All righty. So, in other words, what have I got? I have this integral can be rewritten as this integral, the integral of x dx over the square root of 4 minus x plus 1. quantity squared. Okay, so let's stop and look and see what we have here. That is the constant 4 minus minus something squared. Does that look like anything we've been working with? It should. <laughs> it should look vaguely like a trig substitution thing. Except for what do we want to substitute? Now, we want x plus 1 to be substituted with the trig function because that's what's being squared. And since it's a constant minus x plus 1, oh, did that disappear in the ink? Let's try that again. So we want that to be, we want x plus 1 to be substituted with the trig function. And the trig function we want is a sine theta because we're subtracting it off, the square of that off from a constant. Of course, we want to, when we square it, we want it to be 4 sine squared theta, so we're going to need a 2 sine theta, so we have that. So x plus 1 equals 2 sine theta, and of course, as we discussed in class today, we have the assumption that negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to pi over 2. And let me just remind you why we have that assumption. Because in this situation, that cosine theta is going to be cosine theta. I can't seem to draw a circle with that theta. It, hmm. Okay, 
attaches to that. So in this situation, cosine theta is going to be bigger than or equal to zero, which tells me that square root of cosine squared theta is just theta. Not, we don't have to worry about that absolute value, right? Which is what's nice about that. Okay, now the other thing we need, though, is we need to find dx. Well, differentiating both sides, dx d theta, multiply by theta, well, the derivative of 1 is just 0. So we get dx is equal to 2 cosine theta d theta. Now, let me point something out here. We have an x here in the numerator, not an x plus 1. But we can write x as 2 sine theta minus 1, right? So x is just 2 sine theta minus 1, so we can do that substitution. So let's box this off so it stays out of the way and go through with that substitution. And let's back to the black. That's going to be going to be, well, x is 2 sine theta minus 1, like we just mentioned. Minus 1. dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. And we're dividing by square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta, the square of sine 2 sine theta. Okay, so the whole point of this, you guys, is that 4 minus 4 sine squared theta simplifies into what? Into 4 cosine squared theta. Okay, so what is the square root of 4 cosine squared theta? Well, it's going to be 2 cosine theta. We don't have to worry about the absolute value because we're assuming theta is in a range that makes cosine theta positive. Okay, so guess what? We have some things deleting. That deletes. That cancels with that. 2 cosine theta cancels with 2 cosine theta. This integral simplifies into... 2 sine theta minus 1 d theta, which of course is a very doable integral. That's just negative 2 cosine theta minus theta plus c. And just a quick note, something to keep note of. We're integrating with respect to theta here, right? So that's when I integrate 1 with respect to theta, I get theta, not x. So remember, the thing that you get when you integrate a constant is the variable that you're integrating with respect to. Okay. But now we have to change it all back to x anyway, right? Because that's what our original integral was, and we're doing a definite integral. So if I change it back to x, well, we know that sine theta is equal to x plus 1 over 2, right? Oops. Okay, wrong ink. I did the disappearing ink again, so sorry. Okay, so let's change back to purple. Okay, so sine theta is equal to x plus 1 over 2. And so theta, well, theta is just arc sine of x plus 1 over 2. So this is another benefit of the restriction that we chose, that the restriction of theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, that restriction there is the standard restriction of the sine function so that it's invertible and we can talk about the arc sine. So we can, so the arc sine of that is theta is going to be in that range. Okay, so 
Now we need to figure out what the cosine theta is. So we can look at the triangle. And of course, as we talked about in chapter 6, even though the triangle really is only valid for theta between 0 and pi over 2, if we have this restriction, it's going to work for negative thetas as well. Okay, so we know that sine of theta is x plus 1 over 2. Sine of theta is opposite over adjacent. So any way we label this triangle so that the opposite over the adjacent, over the hypotenuse, excuse me, is x plus 1 over 2, is a valid labeling. So of course the easiest way is to label the opposite x plus 1 and the hypotenuse 2. And then of course we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get the adjacent, which is going to be the hypotenuse squared 4 minus x plus 1, the quantity squared. By the way, that should look familiar. That's what we got after completing the square, right? We trig substitution, you almost always get the same thing back. But anyway, so what's cosine theta then? Cosine theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's square root over 1 half. So it's going to be 1 half square root 4 minus x plus 1 squared. And so let's box this off. Make sure it stays out of our way. And so we now have an answer. I'm going to write that in blank so it's part of this. The answer is minus 2 times cosine theta, which is 1 half square root 4 minus quantity x plus 1 squared and then minus theta which is arc sine x plus 1 over 2 plus the c and of course that simplifies into minus uh, the twos cancel there, so it's minus the square root of 4 minus x plus 1 squared minus arc sine x plus 1 over 2 plus c. Is that not writing? Come on, write. There we go, plus C. And there. Star, 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 star. There is our answer. This is it. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. So let's, while we're here, do a little bit of checking. Okay. So can I move this up? No. So we've got to check very.